Welcome to another Prep Radio podcast. Tom Blackman with Paul Scarborough in attendance. Hello, Paul. Hello, Tom. How are you today? I'm all right, thanks. I'm all right. I, as people might, this isn't my normal um, place of uh, business. I'm in a hotel, I think around about 10 miles away from Southampton. Um, so, yeah, so I'm in a hotel for the next two nights. I'm going to uh, Portsmouth tomorrow. Why didn't you stay in Portsmouth? I hear them ask. No, and their hotels were fully booked. So here oh, I am. Okay, okay yeah. so is this a business or pleasure trip? Business. Business. I will be in the uh, Royal Navy dockyard tomorrow. My old, old stomping times. ground. Yeah, my old stomping ground. Speaking about the new aircraft carriers, but I can't say anything else because it's top secret. Oh, yeah, spy stuff and all that. Yeah. Great. Um, and, if, and if anyone's actually uh, listening to the podcast, it won't make any sense at all because um, you can't see what Paul's doing. But he's in a hotel room yeah. anyway. Which, which, which is good. Excellent. So, yeah. And cool. how are you, Tom? You look like you're stood up. I am, because I bought a standing desk the other day, um, which actually, um, <laughs> you, you'll rip me for this. I, I can't actually put it to the highest setting, because if I do, I can't type on the, not that it's like above my head or anything, but it's just uncomfortable for me to type. <laughs> so, for, the, for, the, for those not watching on YouTube, <laughs> I am in stitches. Yeah, it's, um, so, so the, the height is like in percentages or whatever. So I can only get 93 is the right height for me to, to, to work standing up. So that, those extra 7% um, is no man's land for a little dwarf. Well, you can't write when it's set 93 millimetres. Yeah, <laughs> 93%. Jesus. Then. Yeah, so they, it goes it, actually, actually, you say that. I, I've just been watching Rings of Power on um, <laughs> Prime, and they, they had a bit of a dwarf thing. Really? Just yeah, I, you know. But I've got a walking desk, and I a can walking type desk. On it. Do you have yeah. to catch it? Yeah, and um, a standing desk, <laughs> and uh, I can type and do everything on it on the middle setting. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. When you're bent over with your arched back from old age. <laughs> cool. Okay, so yeah, so I've bought this standing desk, which actually was a really good buy, and. I've I've been umming arming umming and ahhing about getting one for about six months, and I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to get one because everyone else does, and I want to be like you know influencer. Right, right. Without taking a piss, as we normally do. Um, quick, very quick, as quick as it took you to put it together. Um, huh. benefits just just because there might be people going, why would you put yourself through that torture, Tom? about not being able to reach the top shelf. <laughs> well, the, um, the the benefits of a standing desk, a lot of people promote the, oh, it burns more calories and this, that, the other. It actually doesn't. It's something like seven calories more more per hour, which is, which is so inconsequential. It's not worth... So you're not going to get any calorie benefit, as in you're not going to... It's not a fat-burning desk, for example. But what it does do is obviously if you're in a seated position for too long, there's dangers of all sorts of things such as blood clots and all that sort of thing. Not that I think anyone's ever died from a blood clot in their leg from sitting down in an office, but it just it just keeps you more mobile. The other benefit for me is that I, especially when I'm doing videos and stuff like that, I have more energy when I'm stood up. So when I'm talking on the YouTube videos and I just did an Instagram live with um, with Dan, one of my real friends did that just now and he um and it was very good one of your, to, one of your tall friends one of my tall he is tall everyone's <laughs> taller than me all my friends are tall even um, i am well even you like an inch taller than me but um Inches yeah, an so, inch. so it, it's just it's just beneficial I, I feel it's more beneficial i've got a bit more space as well it's a bit longer um and, and yeah so it's um yeah it's quite nice the other thing well, is i'm a bit of a like techie person getting all my video stuff together now it's easier to clip things like uh, boom mics and stuff like onto this desk than my previous one. All oh, right, videos. I'll have to try that one day. Um, Don't you, yours, yours is a face for radio, <laughs> prep radio. <laughs> yeah, podcasts. The man. For yeah, I have to put a ton of makeup on and foundation before I get on camera. It's, 
just it's just not what it was you know i i i know that i know that tom because we went through that when we did prep um so so um it's been a couple of weeks since we well it's been longer than a couple of weeks so um i think two months we're gonna go brief yeah briefly into what we've been up to and um and tonight we're gonna we're gonna look into training so um we're gonna look into just training in general and and um look at you don't have to make it so complicated some rest some information about rest periods and load and, and intensity and things like that and and the not so common word when it comes to training these days common sense okay oh. um but first tom you've just got back from holiday yeah we went to went to egypt um again uh quite like it there it's nice um just did a, an all you can eat session at the at the buffet three times a day. Um, but but to be fair, I'm and this is how I coach as well. Is I coach for sent, making sensible decisions. So and I, I think I did a video and an article about this. Is that when people go on holiday, just they, tell me about your bloody holiday. Why do you? It's not a promo every time you speak. <laughs> well, the the thing was is that a lot of people when they go on holiday, it's like this. Uh, they must overeat. They must. Uh, eat as much as they possibly can um, and I don't know why that exists but it does it's like, oh I'm at the buffet I've got to get my money's worth and <clears throat> and then they eat over eat obviously and come back and then they're overweight and the problem with this is that so many people actually never lose that weight from um, uh, for, from the holiday so what happens is you get people who they they gain a bit of weight on holiday they lose a little bit when they come back but they're always gaining so over the years that's why they get um, that's why they get overweight and they, they can't get it I- off in on that subject actually um this may change now i've said it but i've never been on holiday and actually come back heavier um i tend to either stay the same way or lighter and i and like i said to you i like i like my the little cakes and stuff that they have in these like all-inclusive places but i think one of the reasons being is i have lots and lots of fruit Mm. when i'm on holiday in in the hot country and because it's so readily there, I have lots and lots of fruit and I only eat three times. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, yeah. So we went to, went to Egypt uh, and unfortunately Jacob stood on a sea urchin, uh, second from last day. And if you don't know what a sea urchin is, it's basically a massive sea porcupine. It's a horrible thing. It's a big black thing with spikes sticking out of it. And he stood on one. And I had to lift when I lifted him out of the sea because he's making all obviously, you know, making a lot of noise, but in, in pain, he had all the spikes sticking out of his foot. Very, very painful. And we had to actually go over to, huh? And, and how old is Jacob? Six. Jacob's six. Yeah. So, yeah. So we had to then go over to the hospital in Egypt to um, uh, to get the spines pulled out of his foot. And, and I had a bit of an argument with the doctors because they, uh, they didn't want to give him any anaesthetic in his foot. And I said, there's no way you're you're taking that knife and tweezers to my son's foot without any without some anaesthetic, you know. Even with that, I had to uh, hold him down a bit. And uh, it was, if you're a father, a mother, and you've ever had to do that, I've had to do that a couple of times now with him when he's had, like, um, procedures. Um, and it's very distressing. So... But he was all right afterwards, made a full recovery now. So that's the good thing. And the doctors were cool. good. They just had a different view of how they treat things than in the UK. That's cool. Nice one, bud. And did yeah. you come back fully relaxed? Yeah, it was good, actually. It's a, Before I went away, I, um, I actually invested in a new uh, business training course. Um, and if you, know, if you know anything about me, whatever, you'll know that I regularly invest in training to to make me a better coach, better businessman. So I did that before I went away. And it was, um, and I, I watched some of the videos, did, did some of the activities while I was away. And it's actually a really good, really good program. Um, and I think it will make my business coaching better um, and hopefully help more people. So that was, that was good. So it was sort of like a little bit of work, but not a lot of work. Um, what about so, you? you? You went away, didn't you? Yeah, so... I went away just before Tom, um, which was a couple of weeks after I was ill and in hospital. So my run into the holiday, I was, um, although better after, from my hospital stay, um, I was a little bit on a, a, a like a downward trend. Um, I went on holiday 
I didn't do any coaching. I didn't do business stuff. I didn't, I didn't make myself a better coach. <laughs> um, I was, I was just a dad and a husband and I actually drank for the first time since the transplant. Not a lot. I must admit it was just like one drink a night, but it was nice to have a drink and, and whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, I fully relaxed and accepted. I had, I've got a real problem. It's not, I've got a real problem, but I'm, I'm still, I'm still suffering a lot um, with mental health on how I look. Um, and I don't, I don't open up about it a lot because some people just reply, you should be thankful you're still alive. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and I think it goes without saying, I'm thankful I'm alive, you know? Um, so, um, but if you could be shredded and like 20 stone and dead, <laughs> would, would that be a fair compromise? Well, yeah, you know, the, we, we all can wish, <laughs> but it, for me, it's about, it, it's about being able to walk around without a top on and not feel conscious about how I look now, how I look now is is the best I've looked since my transplant, without right. a shadow of a doubt. Um, but I've got a massive scar along the front of my stomach that bunches fat up and, and whatever, yeah, and it's a scar. And I suppose some people will be like, oh, get over it, blah, 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 you know, no one cares, whatever. Yeah. One person does care, and that's me. And that's what matters, know? isn't it? And that's what matters. And... Um, you know, I, I speak to my wife about it and some close friends. And you spoke to me about it. How ah, weird that. And, um, <laughs> and the majority, they do say you know, when you're on holiday, you know, I was, you know, I wasn't the, the most untidiest dad around, if that makes sense, you know. So yeah. I did come back with a real newfound positivity. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, that's that's really gone into my training. Um, I'm training probably the best I've I, I, I've trained since since the transplant. Um, I've still got ugh, severe pain in my left shoulder. I am managing to push through it a little bit when it goes now in training, but I have got the mental aptitude for training now, which is really good. Um, I am gonna probably just lean up a little bit, just consciously. Just you know, I know we laughed about it earlier, but yeah just consciously just lean up a bit you know not go mad but um and i'll be um i'll be re um launching a new um business in the next couple of weeks so i won't say anything now but all that has has, has really given me a spurt after the holiday to be more positive which is a really good thing and if that if that can happen to me it can happen to other people that are you know um, feeling a little bit down, a little bit mentally challenged to maybe um, just push forward a bit more. So, so um, on to that, um, let's look at um, the subject that we're going to talk about today, training. Oh, yeah. So it's, um, so, it, so I suppose that the, the big topic is not overcomplicating things that don't need to be overcomplicated. But also on the other side of that, not oversimplifying stuff that shouldn't be simplified or, or shouldn't be oversimplified. So there's two edges of the of the equation there, isn't there? Or the, the, the scale. Um, there is. Let, and, let me just let me just turn this light on. This is a good podcast topic, waiting for Paul to turn the light on. And sorry. Now everyone listening to the podcast. I has, can now see you in more. Oh, in more cut brightness. it out then. <laughs> oh, do you want, just before we segue into this, I had to ban someone from the gym um, about 10 days ago. Um, and do, uh, I, I, think I'd, I think we did speak about this, but All just right. for the purposes of the listeners, obviously, imagine, imagine, you walk, imagine you're in a gym and you walked into your room where the weights were, and someone had used the lifting chalk to write their workout, 
their little shitty CrossFit workout on the floor, the rubber matted floor in front of the squat rack. And then have proceeded to train tops off with not very much weight as well. And then when they finished, walk out without clearing up the chalk and give my staff shit for telling them to clean up. And that guy, when I spoke to him, thought I was in the wrong because he was a customer and I should be nice to customers. Mm. Yeah, I've seen you be thankful to customers before. It doesn't end well. I, I've i only ever banned, I think, about four or five people from the gym. Um, and, they, and they were for pretty serious things. Um, but I just thought, do you know what? Just fuck off. You know, that that is, I, I can't, I mean, I, I was thinking to myself for some random moment, maybe I'm overreacting here, maybe I shouldn't ban him. But I thought that is a level of dickery that just goes beyond. What, why would you do that? And do you know what? When I said to him, well, why, why did you write on the floor? You know, I just can't get that. In the training with the tops off, I can give you a warning for that because we don't allow that because it's intimidating to women and stuff. But why did you write with the chalk on the floor? And do you know what he said? Well, I, don't, I didn't want to write on the, the whiteboard where everyone's PRs, PBs were, you know, because we have a deadlift and, you know, PB deadlift board. And I said, well, why didn't you go to reception and get a piece of paper to write it down so you could follow it? He's like, oh, I don't want to do that. He, he didn't see the why it was an issue to write on the floor. And so I thought, you know what? That's a guy that's going to do it again. And mm -hmm. I just think he's the, he's the, he's the kiddie. So I just banned him and his mate banned him as well because they were both abusive to my staff, which really that's the, for me, you know, you can be a bit of a bell end and apologize and get away with it once, but abusing my staff, get the fuck out, mate. I don't want you in the gym. You know, there's, that's no excuse for that. Fair one. Fair that one, was man. interesting. Yeah. So. Just a story. Training. Yeah. Enjoying yeah, let's talk about training. Now. So, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah so okay so so what has prompted this because obviously i've been away on holiday i've come back and i, I know we have different social medias like audiences i have deleted a lot of um people off my social media people i don't get any value from you know all right people you know but i just anything that doesn't help me be a better coach know more about training that sort of thing I, I've, I've deleted off and my friends obviously on there so you're not so I've deleted all that stuff off and I know you follow a whole lot of accounts which actually wind you up and I don't know why you keep following them but I know you do well well to be honest I, I, don't get me wrong right I don't I don't dislike mm, all right I do some of them um <laughs> but I I follow people that interest me okay yeah <laughs> and no 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 I do um I follow the people that interest me but some of those people and people will understand this but some of those people have suddenly become dickheads. They've, they've suddenly, it, it, they've suddenly decided that they're sort of the fountain of knowledge. As in, no, because I've coached thousands of people, when you fucking... Oh, um, hold on for Hold what I say for, is, is, is God, is just gospel. out for a second, just as you would get into the crescendo of you, you went to a thousand people, then you cut out. So right, you that rant again. Right. So <laughs> I, I, so these people who I, I, I sort of uh, get into dislike, but I did like. Mm. Um, they've suddenly they've suddenly grown into sort of this fountain of knowledge by their own right. And with that, suddenly become these massive developed coaches who have coached like thousands of people. And I'm like, no, you haven't. You haven't been a coach for like, you started coaching in 2019, you know? And, and, and it's like, I've been part of this game for 28, 30 years. And I've coached hundreds of thousands of people. And I say, blah, 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 blah. I'm like... <laughs> 
<laughs> right, okay. You know, just you haven't been in this game for that long. You you you're not even that old. You're you not know? even thirty, but you've been in the game yeah, for years. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm you know, it's, like it's like it's like when you get singing contests and they go, So how long have you been singing? Since I was three months old. <laughs> you know, and they're like, ah, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was singing in my mum's womb. Um, what, well, after months that. old? Yeah, yeah, you know. Well, she was a bit of a late pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, big bird. Um, so um, th- that got me on to this. And I thought it would be a great topic to actually just go, right, do you know what, guys? Everybody, everybody in bodybuilding, health and fitness, be it bikini, physique, super heavyweights, female bodybuilding, whatever, have all all done basics. All of them. Now, this isn't a podcast for me to go, right, all you need to do is the bench and the this, the 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 because I don't believe in that, you know. But everybody's done basics. And now everybody's trying to overcomplicate things by my biggest, my biggest bitch. And we will we, we, back, up doing the bitch. There. back up for Go a second, on. because are, are we ranting about coaches who are who are not what they say they are and haven't got the experience they say they are? Or are we now transitioning into people who um, overcomplicate exercise? I want to get sh- make sure we're getting the rant right here. Well, it's a bit of both, actually. Um, <laughs> I want, I, I do this. You shouldn't overcomplicate and, as you said earlier, oversimplify things. Mm. It, it, it's just, and people who um, follow me on Instagram or follow the people I follow on Instagram will understand when I say who invented. The, the, who invented the movement for, let, let's, say, let's say lateral raises, because that seems to be the most common, although I've seen some really fucked up shit with it. Right, someone, <laughs> okay. someone somewhere got the cables and, and decided and went, do you know what? I'm too fucking lazy to hold a handle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you know one of those ankle strap things that the yeah. women use. Yeah, yeah. The glute raises. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it round my ankle, yeah. uh, round my wrist. Yeah, and then I'm gonna do side raises with it. Yeah, there's, um, and I'm like, yeah, who, who, who did that first? And when they did it, did they explain that this? gives more activation to the um, anterior del or it, it saved the joint or you don't need hands anymore or whatever, because I, I've, I've done a bit of research and I can't find anything that gives this way an advantage over, you know, not being a lazy ass and holding a handle. No. So, okay. So, in, in theory, and this isn't saying this is the right thing to do because I, don't, I, I think I've seen a lot of that as well. The, so there is, um, no, try and explain this. So if, if you are holding and pulling something, there is a different technique or a different uh, sensation than if you are pushing against something. So for example, if the weight, the dumbbell, was strapped to your um, front of the forearm, which is which is um, the like the uh, the back of your hand, that side. If the dumbbell was there and you're pushing against the dumbbell, there's a slightly different activation from if you hold the dumbbell. However, if you have got a wrist strap on and the um, the chain is uh, obviously underneath the hand because you've got to pull away from it. You're still essentially doing a pulling motion because yeah. the weight is. Does that make sense? The weight. Yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. Because so, the, the weight's not all on on the top. You've just said I totally, I totally yeah, get. It's, and that's why if I sorry Tom, that's why if I've got the option, if the gym that I'm at 
has that um, machine mm. that has the pads yes. to do side raises, yes. I will use that. Yeah. Um, and, and do you know why? Do you know why that happens? Is because you're uh, when you do that movement. So say you're pulling away or whatever. It's uh, you're actually not um, oh, trying to get like pull the movement. So it's the same when people do like rows. A lot of people row, they grip the handle and they pull it towards them with their bicep first. They don't activate the shoulder to attract before they pull. So the actual, as you know, the rowing motion is retract the shoulder and then follow that movement with the arm. It's how you stop your biceps getting overloaded with a row. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing. If you if you push against pads or push against the weight rather than pulling against the weight, you actually activate the muscle a bit better because you're now not pulling it. You're you're pushing against it. So it's it's only slight, but but it is there. But like but like you said, people are they're, they're not picking that up. It's it's the same thing. Of, oh, I've seen someone do that, and I'm going to do this. And there is actually, I don't think anyway, that much difference because if you are good at what you're doing and you have good technique. If you're doing a lateral raise, you can still pull with your elbow and, and, and the, the rest of the arm becomes the lever. You don't actually pull with the hand. And, and yeah, here's I, the other thing. Sorry, give me two seconds. No, I'll no, finish no, and then, on, yeah. Here's yeah, the other yeah. thing. When people, the re whole reason why you would do this ver ver version is to stop, your, your, stop your, your hand coming higher than your elbow. Because as soon as you do that, you shift the tension slightly. So when you're doing a lateral raise, if your hand goes above the elbow here, it actually shifts on, I think, more onto the rear delt and also onto the um, rotator cuff. So I'll have to check that, but I'm not sure. But it, anyway, it takes it off the side delt. Whereas if you were, if you keep the, the hand below the elbow at all times, you're then activating the, rear, the, the delt more. And this is the problem is because people are doing this, not knowing it, the reason why, and still end up with their hand up here with their wrist in, uh, wrist in bondage and still not activating the, the, the delt properly. So yeah, it, it's it's not knowing why you're doing the exercise, just seeing some guy doing it, and then not knowing why. And and, and this is what I mean. It's, um, it is a typical, you know, you've seen someone do it, yeah? Probably someone on Instagram, it doesn't need to actually have been a pro in real life mm. or anything, but someone on Instagram that either has a lot of followers or is a name in the game or whatever and then it's just trickled down mm. but i agree i i i pride myself on the fact that i do lateral raises properly um and 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 by that i mean exactly what you've just said there i lift with my elbow not my wrist yeah in fact my wrist is slightly lower than my elbow at all times yeah. now when I, when I train with people, because I'm not a PT, but when I train with people and we do side raises, what I tell them to do is basically a motion where they put their hands in their pockets so their arms are not straight, but they're not super bent. They've got a little bend in it and then just go out to the side. And with that, your, your forearm is naturally slanted downwards, hmm. more of a like a... Um, instead of a, a, a quarter to three, more like a 10 to two sort of thing. Um, because to the extreme of that, people will bring their hand right in, past the right angle, and try and do it with their elbow, which also takes it off and brings it onto the front delt as well. Mm. So, um, if and I've always said to people, if you lead with your elbow, um, then you're going to get full activation on your and your um, delt, but like you said, and I've seen this, people will repeat this thing with the bondage things on their arms and their hands will go above their eyes. You know, yeah. will go it, above it, it, their chin. just picked up a dumbbell and done yeah. it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and, but, and, and it negates the fact that the actual side raise with a cable hmm. is far more effective than the side raise with a dumbbell because the um, tension comes on the yeah. cable yeah. sooner than the dumbbell. Yeah, and that that's... Um, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought then. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, so say if you do it right with a cable, if you're, if you're 
you can keep continuous tension all the way through um, and and control it a bit better. Whereas with, with a dumbbell, um, there's a, there's a slight shift. Well, depending on how you do it, I suppose. Um, but yeah, with with a cable, I like the fact that um, you can control the tension a bit more as you as you're coming up. You can dip, dip the angles and everything else. You can do that with a dumbbell as well to a certain extent. But I mean, it, again, it, it comes down to knowing the exercise and what you're doing. And yeah. let's say one of the main things I tell clients is when you're going into every exercise, you can say to yourself, well, one, what am I trying to accomplish with this exercise? You know, if I did this perfectly, what would be the, the end result? And, 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 then, and then why? why? Why am I doing it such a way? So let like, say, for example, you can do bench press a number of different ways. You can do a squat a number of different ways. You know, so you can do an exercise differently to get a, a, a different desired result such as high reps more tension time under tension peak contraction all these things and the problem is when people see these people doing these things on instagram that oh that looks good i'll do that and because they haven't got anyone monitoring their form saying actually this is how you should be doing it because this is the intention of the exercise they just end up fucking it up yeah. and then you know and they're not making any more gains and oh yeah but they but then they're still doing it because it's like oh this is fun and interesting I've 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 seen someone wear them around their like lower bicep just above the elbow um and do them for chest. So basically they oh, would like bring it and like you know, like they'll stand up. Yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll lower the cables to roughly about head high, and then they'd have it like that. So instead of a handle where they're bringing it forward, mm. or the seated seated fly machine, you know, mm. that doubles into a rear delt thing. Um, and they'll do it with that. The problem again with that is um, there, there is a lot of evidence to show that when you do that movement with a bent arm, which it will be when you, when you use yeah. them with the bands, you don't actually fully um, activate your chest. Um, you, you need a slight bend um, in, the, in your arm when they meet in the front mm. to get, proper activation a straight arm you, you a straight arm you really shouldn't be able to do it and touch them in front of you if you've got any no, remembrance of a chest a lot of pressure on your bicep as well wouldn't it yeah and and i see a lot of people do it with bent arm because it it well it's not easier it's easier for them to push bigger weights with their yeah. arm bent rather than extended but again they're using this cuff thing as a sort of do it for this and and my chest will feel pumped what they don't understand is it's not their chest that's feeling pumped from activation it's because your biceps are pushing into your chest <laughs> and and squeezing it together more yeah. you know and it just you know just to be clear someone listening to this saying oh look at those those guys experts criticizing people. has been you know, yeah you know we're not we're not the intention here is not to criticize people who are doing an exercise wrong because their intention is to, imp is, to, is to improve their body. Their intention is to get better. What we're trying to highlight here is that people go into certain exercises just doing like some weird variation without knowing why, why that variation would work better in a certain way. And I, and I think that's, that's a lesson to take away is that whenever you see, and I think we talked about this before, whenever you see something like this being done on Instagram by some big guy or some influencer or some, physio whatever take time to read the caption and see if they actually explain why because you know things like dumbbells and you know traditional cables and barbells have been around for a long while for a reason because they're highly effective you know yeah you can get certain angles with cables and you can get certain angles with dumbbells you can't get with bars and all this sort of stuff which is why you do that exercise that way so it's important to know why you're doing it with a cuff, why you're doing it with this, why you're doing it with that, as opposed to the traditional dumbbell method. And until people start asking, well, why is this better than a dumbbell rather than, oh, it's just another way to do the exercise, they're still going to get mediocre gains. Well, this, this happens now with the same, with the, the exercise we're mainly talking about here is lateral raise. And but we're there's, talking about there's all others, isn't there? Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. But we're talking about the cuff with lateral raise because I've just seen it plastered everywhere. And I can tell you now, a lot of the people I've seen using it don't understand why they're using it. Okay. 
and and you can tell that by how they look and you know some might think well you look shit as well paul but you know it i do now but i haven't always done so um but um not so much about looking shit though it's about knowing that you look no, when, when, when i say when i when i yeah sorry when i when i say look i mean not developed all right as in stick to the basics before you start doing these funky things yeah but yeah. If you're doing lateral raises, like we just said, you know, if you can do them on a cable, yeah, that is more effective than doing them with dumbbells. All right. The 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 mechanics of using the cable will bring the tension onto your side dial and keep it for the whole of the movement, where with a dumbbell it doesn't. Okay. So, you know. Obviously, dumbbells work. I'm just saying if you want to really optimize your side raise, then then do it with cables rather than a dumbbell. Yeah. You know. And then and then um, so go on. No, and, and I was just saying that, and that's just keeping it simple. You know, you don't need to get a cuff. You know, you don't need to get something extra to put in your bag to carry around the gym. You know. Yeah, and it's also worth remembering here that, um, that there is something called the redundancy principle, which is, I think I've talked about it on here before, which is essentially where drop sets come from, is that once you have fatigued the muscle, that then you can go into the other sort of real micro, um, micro exercises that will fatigue the smaller, weaker muscles. But say, say for example, an example of this would be, let's say you do a load of shoulder presses. Yeah, so you smash out the shoulder presses, absolutely do it. Your triceps obviously get a bit of work. Your, your delts are exhausted. So when you come on to doing your side raises, you, you fail very quickly. So you could drop the weight into a dumbbell or whatever, or if you went for this, because we're going to keep on the subject of, you know, lateral raises and stuff. If you went on for a cuff and really dropped the weight and then really controlled the movement, you would then go into these redundant um, or, or let's say second place, third place uh, muscle fibers, which don't normally get used. And that's why you see pro bodybuilders and really big guys doing this movement because they have completely smashed their muscle with the big compounds, the basics. They've done all that stuff and they probably haven't shown that on the Instagram because it's very boring because basics are boring, but they work. And then they've gone on to, oh, let's film this fit, let's film this exercise. And so they're doing this very, very precise. You'll see they're always doing them, by well, the good ones anyway, with really good form, doing this very precise movement, which targets and the muscles popping out and everything else. And everyone's seeing that go, well, well, fuck me, I've got to do that because that's how you get massive. So no, 90% of the workout is the basics. It's the big compounds. It's the, it's the stuff that they do day in, day out consistently to get that foundation and then this is the icing on the cake. Now, um, there is there is another. I've got a question from a, a listener that we'll um, do in just a second. But there is another version of this, and I don't know if you've ever seen. Well, you, I, I guess you will have seen people in the gym do it. Now, um, everybody will be aware that if you um, lock the handles on on a cable crossover to the bottom position, and you bring your arms up. To meet in the middle, that actually will activate your chest. So you just cut out for <clears throat> just cut out for a second, Paul. I think you were talking about um, a low to high cable crossover, which would hit the upper chest. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as we know, with a cable crossover, it's the common way to do it. Um, you go low to high, and it hits the upper chest. Yeah. And um, with that movement, you got tension from the start, as you would with a cable, all the way to the top. Yeah. yeah. Can anybody, and by anybody, you, I feel right explain, e explain to me what benefit is there of getting two dumbbells and standing up and just going <laughs> in front of you? I, I, I see it all the time in, in the gym I train at. Yeah. I've seen it on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm like, but you're moving them so fast, you know. There's no, there, there's zero tension, you know. Mm. Um, I think 
So the, the, the thing here is if you do that movement and, and if, you, if you're listening to the podcast, if you're watching this video um, on my YouTube channel, if there are, you can see this exercise. So, uh, and, and if, and if you got, if you're listening to the, the podcast, I'll, I'll link it into the, um, the show notes or whatever, the link at the bottom. And, and, and basically what you do is you say you were to stand in between a, a cable crossover and imagine you're standing with your palms open sort of like why is it you know why why me sort of movement and then you're you end with your palms at the top almost hands above your head in a prayer type movement and that then hits the pec minor so when you're coming up across the body upwards you you can hit the pec minor doing that but you have to be at a lean back angle to really hit it now you can also do it the other way which is more almost like a breaststroke or butterfly movement on a cable going high over to low and again, a video of that is on my YouTube. The problem is, again, people have seen the people doing this on the cable. And then what they've done is they thought, well, I'll do it with a dumbbell. The, the problem here is if you do it with a dumbbell, you have to think about where the tension's going. So you do actually have to be lying at a, a quite a quite a high incline. I think it's about a 70 degree incline where you where you sit down and then almost like you would do a seated dumbbell curl, but you would lock the arms and then come up to the front like a fly. Um, that would then hit the same movement with the cables would do. But what you do is you get people who stood in front of the mirror and they're doing what like you said, that sort of um, punching someone in the face movement, uppercutting someone in the face movement with a yeah. dumbbell. Um, now, I, I've seen people do this and I've seen them do it on shoulders, shoulder day, which so they're obviously thinking it's a adult exercise. But I also have seen people doing it on a chest day. Now, they might be chucking some front doubt movements in there. You are going to get a tiny bit of activation from the chest there because you are coming across the body slightly. However, the main movement is going to be through the shoulder. But, but the thing I uh, the thing I wanted to do with this podcast to discuss training and stuff was to discuss the 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 things that are done that don't need to be done. You know, yeah. There, it, there it's is a, there is a there is exercise for chest that one. You yeah, know the and, but. People have done it and they're doing it now. And I see a lot of, there's a lot of newbies in my gym um, and I see them do it. And now I don't, I don't tell anybody if they're doing anything wrong in their gym. I've done that in the past and no one appreciates it. So I don't bother. No, just, don't, just, my just business, yeah, isn't it? yeah. So, so unless I suddenly became Charles Glass, you know, um, whose form is know. also slightly questionable on some of his stuff yeah but you know by reputation more mm. than but um it, it's just not worth the hassle for me but i just wanted to highlight stop doing these movements mm. they, 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 they don't work if you want to hit the pec minor upper chest because i can guarantee you no one who does that goes yeah i am developing my pec minor um no you this know, is a chest exercise another chest yeah exercise. um stop doing it do, you, do bench do incline bench do dumbbells do dips do, in fact do dips yeah you know and um it, if, if you if you can bench press then aim to dip the same as what you can bench and then wow. you'll get a chest yeah you know i think it's um again it's that case of they've seen somebody do because i've seen videos of pro bodybuilders doing that that exact movement um and i'm pretty sure they're doing it on shoulders but yeah it, it's um it's one of those things where people are not understanding what the exercise is intended to do what's the if you did this 100 times perfectly what would be the outcome um and and when it should be incorporated into their workout um it's, it's again it's it, it, what it comes down to is like it's the, one of the three things why people don't get the bodies they want is pointless workouts you know, they're, they're doing stuff which doesn't make sense because, and they don't know any different. That's not their fault. They've just seen stuff. They want to train. They like training, but they've just seen stuff that someone else is doing who's got a fairly big chest or shoulders or whatever and thought, well, I'll give that a try because I might it might work for me. But then they do it and they haven't got the technique right. And, you know, again, it's it's not people's fault. So I don't think I don't think anybody goes into workout going, do you know what? I'm going to pick this dumbbell up and do this really shit oh, no, exercise. No. It's and, not going to do and, anything. And, but it's, and like they're not they haven't been told they haven't been educated and part of that is they haven't educated themselves and and like you said this is not two has-beens telling everybody they can't train it's properly and whatever yourself yet. there mate <laughs> yeah I'll i've seen you on stage I've, next year i've seen i've seen yeah it'll be, yeah 
we were fucking Give different kind of stage. That's about it. <laughs> um, but you know, it's not two guys who you know have been and done it. It's, you know, criticizing everybody. It's it really isn't. Um, it, it's just it. It's that when mm-hmm. I when I see someone in the gym, I I want them to have a really productive workout. Mm. You know, and doing these exercises, and we've you know we've we've named the two that are commonly done wrong, like side raises with the hands leading the way, and 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 this one now. There are many many other ones that that are just that need just a slight tweak, mm. you know, and we just haven't got the time on the podcast to say it. Now, I I obviously train at um, I train at Zone Fitness in, in Plymouth. And if anybody, if anybody from Zone is listening to this, because I know some do follow me, Oops. um just it, told them all. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if 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 any of you guys follow me and you're in the gym and I'm in the gym, as long as I'm not in a set, you know, actually training, then and you're unsure about stuff, come over and speak to me. Absolutely. If, when I you know, when I get there and um, before I leave, I always sit in the seated area. If you want to ask me a question, come over to me. Mm. You know, I would rather spend 10 minutes explaining to you how something works or some nutritional stuff and whatever, than you then just going continuously getting it wrong or whatever. And I'm sure the same applies to you, Tom, whenever you are in the gym, because I know you're not in the gym a lot yeah. now <laughs> yeah. because, yeah, because yeah. of the embarrassment of you used to have a physique and, <laughs> and now you're just bald. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I um yeah, I train at quiet times when no one can see the the, the absolute girl weights I'm lifting. Um but yeah, it's, it's exactly right. And I actually would go for any any guy who's in reasonably good shape. I think they would be flattered if you ask them and say, yeah. Look, can I have you got five minutes? Can you just explain to me why this exercise? And you know, I do get people asking me in the gym, said, Oh, I've seen you doing that exercise, what was that for? And I, and I said, Oh, and then I love explaining. I say, This is what it does, and everything else, you know. People, people who train will appreciate. They'll be flattered. They'll be, they'll be very but willing to talk that, to that, you about that, Sorry, just don't ask them when they're actually in a set, because yeah. that happens, and it's the most in the world. In, yeah, you know, I had a guy. I had a guy. I was doing press of um, press downs the other night, and I, I the, in my gym, the cables are two stands, sort of thing, mm. and two towers. And he and he he came to the tower next to me, and he started talking to me. Now I got my headphones in, so I sort of heard him mumble, and he sort of leant forward to catch my eye. And I looked mm. over it, and he asked me if I was using the machine. Now, <laughs> I, as you were um, using it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, no, 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 I, the the tower next to the one I was oh, using, <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 you're all right, mate. But you know, guys, you know, if someone's actually training, actually moving the weight up and down or wherever don't ask them a question wait until the set's finished you know yeah, just do the, just, the pb just, on deadlift just, You're using these plates yeah, one of take yeah just just <laughs> it's a it's it to me that's you know that's a bad just that's a good, isn't it? it is and and i'm just like don't do it just every yeah. no one no one trains for like an hour without stopping you know someone will you know so um, you obviously listen, haven't um, met the boxing guy in the gym who does shadow boxing between dumbbell curls. Uh, oh, right. No, right. Okay. A quick but one. I know. Quick I know, one. I know we've got to wrap minutes. up. I know, Go I know we've got to wrap up. Right. Um, first off, um, first off, I've got a question from Tyler. And I know Tyler is a young lad. McCree versus low volume training. If total weight moved is the same. So you, again, go first. you just, right. just pause for a sec. Right. Um, is there a difference in recovery in high versus low volume training if total weight moved is the same? Uh, depends is the answer. Because if I'm going to pull, let's say, a 280 deadlift from the floor, which is my ever best <laughs> maximum, if I pull that from the floor, um, for two, I think was my best. I think I sat down for about five to ten minutes afterwards because the 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 strain on my central nervous system was massive. However, twenty reps of 
28 kilos or whatever um would be high volume same way or whatever it was 10 ki- 10 reps of 28 kilos yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It, i could do that relatively easy so it does depend on a uh the stress on your central nervous system and your cardio respiratory system so now, if you're out of breath you, you, just, you, know, you might need to start again later just to add to that which links into tyler's uh, very quickly because i know we got to wrap up yeah, yeah. um there has been um, some recent evidence released by Brad Trondfield, um that shows that two to three minutes rest between sets is far superior to 60 seconds and 90 seconds. Mm-hmm. Now, I think I five go, minutes was more optimal as well. Well, it, well, the, um, in the paper that I read, they actually said that even more rest would be better, but they didn't, they didn't actually look at that. But what they did conclude is the reason why that was is just so they they say it's um, optimal because you can then lift more load. Yeah, yeah. And, more to do more. And, yeah, and what they've put that down to is basically you rest more, you can then keep that load at that intensity for the next set and then the next yeah. set and then the next set. So essentially, it's like Tyler wants to know about um, high and low volume, you know, if if you're if you're resting 30 to 60 seconds between sets then you're going to fatigue a lot quicker than if yeah. you're resting 2 to 3 minutes between sets and it has been found to be better more optimal for muscle mm-hmm. growth so again if anybody sees me in the gym looking at my watch a lot and resting a lot Checking i tend to rest a lot. yeah i tend to rest for 2 minutes between sets so um, that's tied into Tyler's um, and Tom needs to go and make the tea, I believe that is. I do need to go and um, make my tea because I'm hungry and uh, right, okay. stuff. Oh, a visual that no one really wanted to Play imagine. Uh, <laughs> um, and, and so um, where can we get older, you, Tom? Uh, best place, uh, Instagram, Tom Blackman underscore nutrition. On YouTube is Tom Blackman. I think it's just Tom Blackman on YouTube. Yeah, you can type me in. If you search on YouTube, Tom Blackman, that's even better because then it tells YouTube you're searching for my name. So please do that. And and for me, it's either, uh, well, it's Team Peace Garb on Instagram and Facebook. And on YouTube, it is Team Peace Garb Coaching. Great. Okay, uh, I don't even think we have time for our sponsors today. So sorry about that, no. sponsors, who we don't have. We can't do your shout out. Um, so, Paul, I will see you next time. And hopefully it won't be more than four weeks this time. And nope. uh, um, Yeah, so um, we'll see you later, mate. I'll uh, speak to you in the weeks ahead. Yeah, okay. Thanks, mate. See you in a bit. Bye now. Bye-bye.